Welcome. Eh. Great start. Please <laughs> keep that in. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what word was coming out of your mouth. It's fine. Welcome to X-Men Evolution, episode 43 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I'm Rod. Uh, this is the last episode recording of three and like a half or a quarter tonight, so I'm a little tired, and uh, Lucy has been an absolute angel tonight. I mean, I love now that Lucy is like able to be on screen because oh, now yeah. we don't sound like crazy people. Right, yeah, and you can see my little hoodie. Ca- we, one of the things we have in common is we both love hoodie season. She, for some reason, likes it year round, and I we have this awkward month where I'm like, you, it's literally a hundred degrees inside. I can't put a sweater on you in good conscience. Uh, but right now, she's happy as a clam because uh, she has an assortment of little hoodies from the brand she likes. And- yeah, because <laughs> we're just coming off of that week in LA uh, about a oh week and God. a half ago, where it was a hundred degrees every day for five days. <laughs> Yeah, I was taking cold showers, and I was literally just pouring water on her a couple times a day just to try to, like, even it out and stuff. And she wasn't really fighting. I mean, she was like, what is... Oh, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> um, and then even so, like, the last day, uh, I think I mentioned this a couple episodes ago, I went to go take my cold shower to cool off, and the water was running hot, like, at least, like, 70, 80 degrees or something crazy. Like, and I was like, oh, I can't handle this, and... If it had gone, if it said it was going to go like one or two more days, I might have just packed up and gone to a hotel because I was just like unlivable. Like the air conditioning couldn't keep up. Wa- cold water was hot. Like it's wild. We're not Arizona. We're SoCal. <laughs> and I'm JC. Cyclops is waiting for me as our weekly podcast series. We are going back and watching every single X Men animated episode that we can find. This podcast started with the original 1992 X Men, the animated series, which was building up to the release of X Men 97. And along the way, we launched our companion show, The Xavier Files, with interviews from members of the X Men community and voice actors from the series. And hopefully, I'm not jinxing us by saying the next episode that we're posting in this feed will be one of those interviews. Uh, since season two of X Men 97, and is now a ways off. We are back for the second half of our first ever watch through of X Men Evolution. I didn't stutter on it this time. Yay. I'll make up for it. Some quick reminders we're a recap show about a series that started over 20 years ago. There will be spoilers. If you don't want spoiled for you, pause the podcast. I don't even know if I can recommend watching this episode, uh, but definitely come back. And <laughs> do, do a Joe Russo and just listen to us with no context. It might make more sense in this one. Hmm. <laughs> or this is if there was ever an episode that you were like i need to do laundry this might be the one uh it's vibes it's vibes and <laughs> on, on that note we're currently not sponsored by or affiliated with marvel marvel animation disney or disney plus in any way also no shade if you, any of the writers of this episode are listening for some reason because we're in la and we never know uh i think i saw the writer on this episode was chris yost who is way too famous to be listening to us cool and then the producer, who was also the one who created X-23, so hopefully he didn't hear the John Reisinger episode and was like, I should listen to more from these guys. Yeah. <sighs> Don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Twitter, and Facebook. And of course, make sure to make us number one on CastBox or whatever yeah. podcast service. Uh, I usually save this to the end, but I'm going to say it now before we get into the meat and potatoes of it. If you can, please throw us a rating on the podcast app that you're listening on, because that does help us out. uh, And I want to be helped out. Yeah, there you go. And presumably comments on Spotify, because if they added a new feature, it has to mean something, right? Uh, Sure. Let's argue that it will until we find out it doesn't. (laughs) Now onto the show. Today, we're going to be talking about season, the season three finale. I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, Episode 13, titled Cruise Control. It aired August 23rd, 2003, and currently sits at a 6.8 star rating on IMDb. That's still too high. I- so, real quick, I do have to point this out. This is technically the season three finale. We've addressed it in the two previous episodes that this was supposed to air prior to the X-23 episode. But the next uh, season starts literally the following week in real time. It was August 30th of 2003 for season four, episode one. Oh, really? There wasn't a break? No. Wild. Remember how when I talked about at the beginning of X-23 that it was nine months after the previous episode had aired? Yeah. 
they ended with the four episodes of this season and then immediately the following week aired season four, episode one. Okay. So, okay. So this is less a season finale and just kind of like mid, like first few episodes. It's a transition episode, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. But in terms of like episode order from like, like ordering episodes for production, technically it's the the finale from the network's perspective. And so like, we we got a little screwed up on it because of the order on Disney Plus, even though it was not reflective of the script order, which was in some of the wikis. Yeah, so like we both watched this like earlier before X twenty three. You rewatched it. I haven't had time to rewatch it, but So this will be fun. Yeah, and then when I watched Dark Horizons, that was like the proper finale. That actually felt like a finale. While I was watching it, I was like how does this lead to them being on a cruise ship? Especially, like I mentioned in the last episode, there's a minute and a half left, and Apocalypse just, like, Hulk clapped the entire team. I thought they were going to die, or, like, are they going to go into, like, a delusion or something? Or, like, what is going on here? Because all the characters we see... Well, not all the characters. Like, a lot of the characters we see on the cruise ship, like Storm and stuff, Mm -hmm. are in that tomb. And then, I don't know. So it was like... All right, sure, whatever. And this could literally go anywhere in the season. (laughs) Yeah, what I am hoping is the case is that it's like next season kicks off and it's been like we've been searching for Apocalypse for weeks and we can't find him and there's like a little bit of a time jump. That Mm. makes it okay. If it picks up with them in the tomb, that's going to suck from a viewership perspective. Yeah, or they're like, yeah, we've been searching for months. Also, wasn't that cruise nice? (laughs) And Professor X sent these kids on a cruise, one to celebrate Gene and Scott graduating, but also in fear that they're going to die soon. So he wants to give them one happy send off. There you go. And he's like, yeah. and also, we don't know Apocalypse isn't allergic to water. So. He did live in the desert for, so. <laughs> for a while and then lived in mountains. He's never lived in Atlantis. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> God, our theories are stupid. Watch, you're going to be right. <laughs> um. But or especially because I just said it right, dude. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so but- uh, without spoiling anything, I shot Rod a uh, a prediction for Wandavision. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Last night, as we were watching it, because right now this is only two episodes of aired for Wandavision at the time of this recording, and if I am right. I'm going to call it the rod effect because oh, you literally, you it's like I'm literally just throwing something at a wall, hoping it happens. Yeah. I'm confused by what they're trying to imply. Mostly because it is for me, for Agatha all along, it's mostly because of, uh, Oh yeah. Meta, Agatha, not WandaVision yeah, that. for, for meta stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's certain details. I'm like, is this supposed to lead to something or is it because you don't want to cross over movie actors and TV actors anymore? Or, you don't want to pay someone to show their face somewhere or something, you know? Yeah. And uh, it could be clever or it could just be meta payroll stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but so far, so far, I like it. Like, it's a if you, it, very Halloween themed. Yes. It's appropriate Hope, for it. Hopefully, by the time this episode airs for us, the show hasn't taken a, like, massive nosedive. Right. Everybody's yeah. like, what are they talking about? <laughs> Remember, we've only seen episodes one and two. So if episode three and four suck... You can't blame us for what we thought in the past. They haven't told me what happens, but a couple film critic friends that got to see the first four episodes, I guess that's mm-hmm. what press got to see, said third episode is when things pop off. Okay. Um, and there's a big name drop, which this is not a spoiler because no one told me this. Just because of how Hollywood has gone, or the not Hollywood, like the L.A. crowd has gone, I'm just assuming it's Mephisto because that's the thing that everything Marvel is like. They're waiting for the name. I mean, WandaVision was where Mephisto was brought up in right. every single theory video for eight <laughs> weeks. So, yeah. Yeah, launched YouTube channels and stuff. <laughs> True. But we're here to talk about a bunch of dumb teenagers on a cruise. Yep. It starts off with your favorite one, though. It does. Uh, who I'm still not sure if she's on the team or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, because she's supposed to be uh, with the Brotherhood. Well, she ki- kind of like fucked off with the Brotherhood, but she's also like playing softball with the X-Men, but not living at the mansion either. Yeah. It's sure. really... Boom Boom is a confusing person. <laughs> but she's she's amazing at doing the limbo, apparently. Yeah. So it's her and Storm and Magma, and mm-hmm. Magma is feeling a little ill. 
Um, this is like one of those like on the nose superhero tropes, right? Like, oh, her power is from like the earth and there, she's not touching the earth. I wonder what could be wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Storm offers uh, to get the on ship doctor to give her medicine. I do like either scenario for where this falls in the timeline of the story. Rogue staying behind makes sense. Yeah. Because it was either, oh, she had just dealt with losing all those things in her personality, or that happens exactly a fucking again, so she probably feels the same way that she did about eight episodes, or four episodes ago. Yeah. Or, if it was earlier in the season, she just doesn't feel like it. <laughs> she just didn't want to be on a boat, because she'll burn instantly. Because she's... Oh, yeah, there's that, yeah. I was just saying, like, she's she's the 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 moody goth girl, right? Mm-hmm. In, in, this, in this show, so she's like, uh, fuck off. And if I if you don't want me to, then I'll touch you. Like this. <laughs> yep. Uh, we get some Caribbean music, um, which I didn't know if it was actually supposed to be Caribbean music, but they did later confirm that they were in a Caribbean cruise. Uh, boom, boom, grabs magma and is like, you know, we want to cruise the deck. And I was just like, that is close to being a euphemism. Right. <laughs> uh I- I just kind of assume, I guess it, since this is teenagers, hopefully not, but like usually, yeah, when I hear something like that, I'm like, oh, because I have friends that work on cruise ships mm-hmm. and language like that is definitely used for something else. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought it was. Yeah. Or maybe that is what she is. Boom, boom, right? She's a loose cannon. <laughs> a boom, boom fucks. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 but maybe, maybe Magma is the quiet one, you know, that. Uh, Got to break her out of her shell. Uh-huh. Yeah, or she's already there. Like she's she's also like. <laughs> oh, she's like uh, uh, what's her name? The girl from uh, American Pie, the band camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Allison Hannigan. Yeah, I don't know where her name in the movie is, but yeah, Allison Hannigan. Um, yeah, with the flute. Yep. Um, uh-huh. but then, yeah, things, then... things that wouldn't happen in movies today. Right, oh, the whole movie, <laughs> <laughs> the entirety of it. Um. Then. With they, the camera pans down to like the deck below and we see Scott and Jean. They're not quite having the talk, but they are enjoying having alone time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what they kind of dance around is like, well, at least it can be just the two of us, but it's never going to be, be the two of them because they're locked on a cruise ship with a bunch of their team. Well, it's peaceful because they're out in the middle of the ocean. And then there's like n- the, the big thing is everybody back in Bayville knows that they're mutants here. Nobody knows because, again, we've emphasized this, like, people forget how little information made it out of small circles with what the Internet was in 2003. Yeah, Uh, because it wasn't just ever it it would have had to made like print news for it to be broadcast on the Internet, most likely. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the biggest moments that was like the 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 broke yahoo moment because it was literally yahoo in the in the time was the original civil war comic where peter parker unmasked as spider-man and that crashed the front page of yahoo but oh, like really? it took that. something that big for it to be like everybody was talking about something on the internet that wow. was like the for you to crash yahoo at that point you had to have a stupid amount of traffic so it is also wild to think about when Yahoo was the top of the game. Yeah, because that was that was that was literally a crash Yahoo moment. I remember that being like email address. It was basically what Google is now news mm-hmm. email. Um, I remember before YouTube was a thing. That's where we went to go watch music videos, and it was a mm-hmm. big deal because like we don't have to wait for it to go on VH1 or MTV. Yeah, you know, I remember one of the guys in my dorm saying like because we used to buy music videos off iTunes. Mm-hmm. And one of my guys who lived in my dorm was like, "Oh, I don't have to buy them anymore because it's a site called Yahoo." You can just watch them anytime you want. And it was like... <laughs> right, because they literally had Yahoo Music, which was where you'd stream the specifically music videos, too. Yeah. At like, it was like its own separate license, essentially. At like 20p resolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're like getting close, and it's like personal time, and they're like almost about to like go in for the kiss, it felt like. And then Kitty and Kurt start laughing and essentially cock block them. Yeah. <laughs> they're like the uh, the young siblings, right? Mm-hmm. They just like won't let go of their ankles. But it's also like you would think Kitty would want it to happen for Jean, but she just like gets around Kurt and then immediately like joins in on like blocking anything from happening. I think she still wants it to happen. I just think she wants to be there to watch it. <laughs> I think that's what's the kind of messed up about her. Is that and what not- teenagers did? I don't remember that. 
Well, no, I think it's just that cognitive dissonance. She thinks that like her observing it isn't going to change the situation. Isn't that like, a whole thing weird. by just by observing something you you affect the outcome? Yeah, that's like a literal the, like uh, property of physics. I think. Yeah, it's uh, like a it's a scientific <laughs> principle. Yeah. Um, and then you start seeing uh, all these big giant things like Big Ben, um, like there's a duck and Abraham Lincoln f- uh, made out of ice that are floating by the side of the boat. Yeah, right after Scott and Gene were like, at least no one knows we're mutants here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Bobby, yeah, uh, Magma's getting more sick through all this. Mm-hmm. And then Iceman decides to like, really show off. And he's like, let's make an iceberg because teenagers. <laughs> and he literally jumps on the front of the boat and recreates... I'm king of the world. They cut it off before he says the last word of it. But he literally recreates a scene from Titanic. Yeah. Which shows how stupid Bobby is. What a, like, product of its time. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I don't... That was a who, that was a meme at that point. Like yeah. I'm King of the World being parodied was an early 2000s meme. And the movie and the song and everything like somehow as much of a 90s kid nostalgia geek I am, I've still never seen Titanic. That's and, shocking to me. And I think it's going to be like a life goal now. Not because to I hate it. To just make it through without seeing it at this point. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not it's not that I hate it or think I'm going to hate it. It's just like, wow, that, what a weird little thing to be able to like kind of keep. And I just remember at the time, mm-hmm. I didn't like the idea of sitting through a movie that took up two VHSs as I was that long because I was right. like only like half interested to begin with. Yeah, and yeah, I know, yeah, totally. And I know what happens at the end. So like, <laughs> and then when I got older, I was like, well, now I haven't. And then now, now I'm like in my 40s. I'm like, uh, this might be a cool, cooler thing to keep up not doing. Than to try to watch it. <laughs> My only, only memory of Titanic is at one part where the the boat goes vertical during the mm. sinking process. Uh, people are falling off of the back and they're hitting the turbines. Uh, oh, no. And there's like a big gong noise as they hit it. Oh, no. And there are girls like because I was in high school. We were both in high school when this came out. Yeah. There are girls like two seats over who are bawling their eyes out. And, and I laughed so fucking loud in the middle of the theater that like every eye shot at me when that <laughs> bong hit. And it's like, I was like, oh, okay. it's funny still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. that's funny. No. Uh, but yeah, so he, he decides to go for the meme. And then uh, he kind of stumbles because he did the meme thing. And the ship actually almost Titanic's. Yeah, because the captain, or not the captain, but the, the, the person steering the boat actually sees it and, like, panics. And, of course, that, you know, that happens. Also, that's where it cuts to uh, the intro. Yeah. So, we're, we're supposed to assume that the cliffhanger was uh, the ship crashes? I guess the, the it could have been the conflict that, like, they have to rescue the ship or something. That would have been a more interesting story. Mm. But, yeah, uh, that Bobby almost killed a bunch of people. Yeah, and then they had to like somehow like salvage a ship, but nope. uh, no, no. Nope. So Bobby falls. Jean does her telekinesis to uh, save him. Um, uh, Magma can't use her powers uh, on it. She's like unable to connect with what's going on, like you were saying, to the trope of it. Um, and Scott is able to blast through. Uh, and he starts getting mad at Bobby of like, uh, remember that whole like, let's not draw attention to this. That's literally what you did. So. Yeah. And meanwhile, that guy steering sees everything, the kids included. Mm-hmm. And he's and I the th- ship's doctor is checking on him to make sure he's like not insane. That was funny. Is like I thought that was going to be the like them being outed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they just they brought that whole point up just to make fun of the the guy steering the ship. Yeah, the guy that was trying to save their life. They were just making fun of him. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, then the next morning magma is still sick and then she actually says I think I've been away from the ground and the earth too long yeah and she mentions that the only other time it had happened previously was when she had flown from Brazil which I'm assuming there's there's a direct from Brazil to New York for her to get to Bayville kind of mm-hmm. scenario and if that's anything like flying from LA to uh, Australia or LA to Tokyo that's like at least like a 12 hour flight so yeah. she's not in good shape as this is going down yeah and then they, I've never been on a cruise ship so I'm assuming this is a fairly accurate breakfast buffet but to me it looked like the Shoney's breakfast buffet 
The what? Kind of kind of got me hungry. This is a restaurant called Shoney's. Um, there's probably a handful left nowadays, but mm-hmm. back in when in the time this uh, show was out when I was a kid, they were everywhere. They had a little teddy bear as a mascot. But I remember this happened less in the 2000s, but more in the early and mid 90s. They had the, as I remember, a killer breakfast buffet. Okay. And um, it probably wasn't. I don't. It was probably cheap, and that's why my parents brought me there. But I remember uh-huh. loving it because I got like bottomless biscuits and gravy and scrambled eggs and bacon and stuff and uh but this is what it looked like to me um but then uh like golden corral style a little bit shoney's was its own weird little thing because i i they had other stuff just as a kid my parents only ever took me there for breakfast buffets so i don't have a context of what the rest of their anything was Okay. Um, to me, it was just the breakfast spot. It was next door to the Christian bookstore in Kokomo. Anybody who, who I went to high school with is listening to this. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Like we had Living Water bookstores and Shoney's, <laughs> and then Steak and Shake was across the street. Um, but they're At all least having you had a Steak and Shake. Oh man, Steak and Shake was everywhere. I was, that, that's and that was the only 24 uh, hour spot, or not the mm-hmm. only. It was that and Denny's, but Steak and Shake was a little cooler. And also, their <laughs> service was terrible. So if you ever wanted to hang out with friends, you knew you could hang out there for like hours because it take two hours to get service to begin with so they were yeah. like they can't really yell at you for being there for two hours because they haven't served you yeah and also like this was also bef- uh, most of the time i remember steak and shake was before there was a no like a no smoking thing mm-hmm. so they had the smoking sections but it was like a single piece of plexiglass that was two foot like long you know on each side of the thing so you know we probably got lung cancer there mm-hmm. but like it's just uh anyway so um that's what I connected to with this like cruise ship breakfast buffet, but the kids are all like having breakfast and stuff. And then there's this like random Karen throwing a fit off yeah. the side. Uh, who's very pissed about like her eggs Benedict, apparently. Um, yeah. The yeah. sauce on it. I mean, I, I, I guess, but it's also like, it was, it was very early, like Karen prototype of like, mm-hmm. I'm going to make everybody know that this is my problem scenario there's certain not that being mean to wait staff or anything is ever okay but there's certain places where i'm not surprised by it like if i'm going yes. meeting a friend in beverly hills for brunch on sunday you know on mm-hmm. like a labor day weekend or something i'm not going to be surprised to see a few people like throw fits about their over you know, like four x priced eggs benedict or whatever mm-hmm. but like on a cruise ship even though it's technically like kind of a luxury, like I always see cruise ships as like an all inclusive thing. Like it's framed in somewhat of a bargain, even if it's expensive. So I've I've actually like like asked this question. I'm like, do good things actually ever happen on cruise ships? Because every cruise ship video that ever makes its way to me makes it seem like the most miserable experience ever. Like, oh, all the toilets are backed up, or oh, there's a 75 person fist fight. Or, yeah. like, I literally went to college with a girl who was on that cruise ship in the Mediterranean that flipped over in the middle oh, of the Jesus. cruise. She and her mom made it all fine and everything yeah. like that. But, like, she was on that, like, that cruise ship. So. And, like, STDs and stuff. And then, obviously, COVID had its whole... It was like, that was a Petri dish, right? Oh, yeah, because there was just people stuck on a boat together and you couldn't let people off until they all started testing negative. Yeah, and, and then uh, I have... So in music, uh, I have a lot of friends that work, at least worked, I don't know if they still do, on cruise ships, you know, because mm-hmm. they would sing or play in the band or something for months yeah. at a time. And we have at they... least one mutual who did uh, stand-up comedy on uh, cruise ships, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, like, I had some friends that they would do, like, seven or eight-month contracts, right? Like, they, would just, they wouldn't even keep an apartment because they'd be there so much. And mm-hmm. the stories they told me about that, they were like... Yeah, like every every run, uh, whatever, like a uh, cycle of a cruise, someone dies. You have that many people in one place, someone's just going to die. Maybe, oh, yeah. probably not from an accident, just like it tends to like attract elderly people and the, the statistics are just there. But then also he's like, I, I was told by multiple friends to like, if uh, that when the cruise ship starts offering free ice cream to passengers, that means so many people have died that the morgue has filled up on the ship and they're using the food freezers. <laughs> and if that's not true for anybody else that's listening that might work on our cruise ship at least was with my friends because they like they were like it, it wasn't often it wasn't like this happened every time but they were like mm-hmm. once in a blue moon you'd hear over the speakers like oh come to the whatever deck for free ice cream it's like they ran out because there's a morgue on the cruise ship mm-hmm. they ran out of room there and they had to use other cold storage right so i was like 
Yeah, I don't. I'm good. Like I'm good on land. <laughs> yeah. Um, we see uh, Jamie act, uh, accidentally uh, multiplies himself because he gets so excited over the waffles on the cruise ship. I did the same thing as Shoney, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, except you didn't become four rods. To my parents, I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> luckily, they only had to pay once for it. Yeah. Um, and then you see Scott and Jean continuing to flirt. Kitty and Kurt are like mocking them, and the Karen won't shut up. Uh, and that's when Boom Boom decides I'm going to be chaos and I'm going to light their table on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a real low profile. Um, that's why she's not, she's like invited on like group trips to the X-Men, but they don't trust her on the team yet. I feel like it should be the other way. Like they should keep her in the school and not let her out in public. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then Jean saves the day. Um, but by taking a full lobster tank with lobsters in it and dumping it on the table. Yeah. Then the lobsters go crazy. They're like gremlins. Um, -hmm. and that outs everyone because the Karen notices Jean thinking hard. And then uh, it, w- it wasn't just that. It was also uh, Kurt's um, uh, image oh, yeah. uh, inducer goes on the fritz and he um, he uh, he goes blue. And then was it also multiple who activated his powers again accidentally? But this time everybody saw it in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once again with Kurt, just don't wear the leotard and you can make yeah. yourself in the blow of this reveal. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't need to be in full uniform under that. <laughs> um, so then they're just full on outed. They don't really come back to this whole like food fight situation. You just kind of assume they got resolved because cruise ship and they're used to 75 person fist fights and ice cream morgues. Mm-hmm. And uh, we skip to the pool um, on the ship and they're basically the kids are just basically being harassed. Like, it yeah, they're just getting dirty them. looks and people whispering and all that shit. Um. And then we hear the announcement that instead of anchoring in the Bahamas, which I guess was their destination, mm-hmm. um, they're going to anchor down and land uh, near an island with a volcano. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Are there volcanos in the Caribbean? <laughs> Uh, but I just think it's funny. They're like that. It's kind of like in the I think Scooby Doo two movie. I forget which one. I think well, no, it was one um, where they're like, we're gonna go to like Scary Island or something. Uh, oh, there are active volcanoes in the Caribbean. I learned something new today. Um, then uh, magma is in her room, getting sicker and sicker. Uh, and I think does it boom boom like tip off storm. Yes, magma's just like not okay. Like she's like we need to do something with her now. Like this is more than just like a morale kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they anchor near the island. They don't anchor on the island. Uh, I don't know what yeah. the importance was to anchor near land, but not on it. Well, I think it was because it's not a resort. You can't yeah. just drop a bunch of people onto this island and expect the locals to be able to deal with them kind of scenario. Yeah. I just didn't know if there was like a reason they couldn't just stop anywhere else in the ocean. I guess they just wanted something in proximity in case. Well, it was because they didn't want to not go to, uh, what was it? Bermuda? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, they, Bahamas. Bahamas. Sorry. They didn't want to not go there, but they also needed to like, they didn't want to drive into the storm kind of scenario. That's right. Yeah. So, um, Oh, Saint, Scott- Se- Saint Sebastian Island. That's what it was. Oh, there you go. So Gene yep. and Scott take this as their opportunity to finally get some alone time. Mm-hmm. Maybe even have the talk. <laughs> Probably screw first the and then, then have the talk. Um, and they they do the the um, the thing where they they they're running with the dolph- running with the dolphins the thing uh, flying flying over the dolphins over the yes. dolphins that are it, jumping. It out felt of the water. like this was where they blew their uh, production budget on this episode <laughs> on this shot in particular. It was like a storm in X Men ninety seven when she was flying through the horses. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we just—I'm seeing... shocked you made that comparison <laughs> <laughs> for something that you loved so much compared to this episode. <laughs> this was the better part of the episode, to be honest. Like at least it looked pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then we start seeing the kids like kind of one, not like two by two pair off to escape to the island because they're teenagers and they all have the same ideas. So like Nightcrawler teleports him and Kitty. Once again, like I don't have the idea of like what the limitations of his powers are here. This version, I feel like, does not have limitations. <laughs> um, 
And then Bobby uh, knocks on um, Magma's door, and then he decides to make a kayak out of uh, ice to get them over there. That was pretty fun. Um, mm-hmm. You know, aside from it probably being really cold or whatever, it's like, oh, that one's like kind of... Oh, yeah, sitting on that would suck. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your ass would literally freeze to it. Yeah, especially because it's like humid out there. I don't think too much about this. That's awful. <laughs> um, Then, like, Scott and Gene get, like, five seconds of alone time where they get to be like a couple like shopping and stuff did you notice there was one really weirdly drawn man on the island there was one tiny white bald guy who looked like an old man but he was the same size as a child i noticed something like very specific like i remember thinking like that's not just a background character someone made a reference there even it, as animation. far as I could tell, that was not a reference. It was just fucking a weird animation choice. Well, I mean, I mean, just mean to like animators, like someone, oh, made, yeah, like, yeah. a joke or something, like inside. You know, they probably yeah. took, they'll probably take it to their grave or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, then then they of course all run into each other because yeah. small well, was, island and they had the same. There was a point. really weird uh, interaction right before they run into each other, where Scott is like, "Oh, there's a volcano. Uh, look, there's a postcard." Want to go spit in it? Oh, that's right. It was a really weird reference. It was so weird. I don't write down full quotes for this show. I wrote that down. <laughs> and I didn't get that, like, what that meant. Because it obviously wasn't literal, because you can never get that close. But then, yeah. like, what was it supposed to be, like, a joke for? Like, I don't know. <laughs> also, like, spitting into a volcano is just a really, like, we were the age of these people when this was written, so that was not a trope that we would have yeah. like been familiar with. Like, I, I would have thought if there would have been a joke, it'd been like you want to jump into the volcano or something. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that teenage that was... suicide. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Joe versus the volcano? No. One of my favorites ever. Uh, uh, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, mm-hmm. and surprisingly, with those two, not one of their most famous ones, but like it's really goofy and funny. Um, but uh, that you know, then there they, the whole point of the movie is Tom Hanks has a, a terminal illness, and mm-hmm. so he takes an offer to uh, a, a credit card with an unlimited amount of money on it to live out the last of his like few days, as long as he jumps into a volcano, as like a sacrifice for some tribe or something, something at that island. That's dark. And so, like, if anything, I would have thought like, jump in the volcano would have been like a relatively timely reference or something but that no, spitting is i'm not aware of whatever mm. that was supposed to mean but but it, yeah at that point you do see tabitha there uh amara bobby and then kitty and uh and nightcrawler run into uh gene and scott and they get the idea oh we should go to a hot springs which I, sounds awesome i don't know if i would have thought of that as a teenager but me now yes that sounds amazing (laughs) so i don't know about like ones near a volcano but i do know that like a lot of hot springs smell like just bad eggs because of all the sulfur yeah Yeah. so i don't know i don't know if i could get past that i'm like really sensitive sense of smell that i might just be like awful and painful for me the entire time when I was a kid, my parents took me to some hot springs in Korea, and I do not remember there being an overwhelming sulfur smell. So either it's a different kind, like there's something, you know, you know how like when some stuff, uh, there's different variations of it or whatever. Of course. So either is it that, or we were in one of the places where it just wasn't. It was other minerals and not sulfur. Um, when when I was a teenager, I got to go to Australia and New Zealand. And I want to say this was in Australia, but there was a hot springs that they took us to. Mm -hmm. But it was like hot springs that would be dangerous and melt off your skin hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And the whole area just smelled like bad eggs. (laughs) Now, my parents did tell me I wasn't allowed to drink the water at the springs. Mm -hmm. And the reason they told me that wasn't just because I was a dumb kid. I mean, partially because I'm a dumb kid. But the other reason was um, there was actually like scoops and everyone around there was drinking out of it. Mm -hmm. And... uh, my parents were like, you can't drink out of there because you didn't grow up here and something will probably make you very sick. And I was like, kind of like if you travel to Mexico, don't drink the tap water kind of scenario. Yeah. Just like, you know, yeah. microorganisms and stuff. And mm-hmm. I think that was my first concept of like, Oh, well, like that's different, you know, like <laughs> totally. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they get the, the speaking of 
hot, so hot it's going to melt your skin off. They end up at the hot springs. Magma is living her best life, and then she decides. Bobby to go. won't even get in the hot spring. I love. He's yeah. like, oh, I'm watching from the outside. Fuck this. Oh, I love that because I was wondering like how they were going to handle that. If it's like, oh, he can do it because he won't get too hot, mm-hmm. or uh, yeah, like like it happened. He's like, this is kryptonite. Yeah. Um, but sh- so magma goes like full powered up or whatever swims down the ocean i couldn't quite tell what happened but luckily they she says what happens later she mm-hmm. like swims by like a crack in the rock at the bottom of the water that has like the lava show, showing up and then you just kind of see it like flare up which i don't think that's how lava works yeah like leaks directly into like a <laughs> also a if there's a if there's a crack that you get lava that that is that close to the surface that should, probably should not be a hot springs that people are able to get into right <laughs> no um and... but yeah she also like i want to say in the previous animations of her showcasing her powers she was not she almost looked like the fire uh what was it elemental from uh pixar like she oh, literally yeah. like looked like that style like it wasn't just her with like the sunspot activated style power or something. Yeah. No, like she makes... was animated differently in this episode. Yeah. And um, then the water quickly becomes hotter and hotter. Like the kids are like, hey, hey guys, this is getting a little, a little too hot. And then they like freak. They're like, oh, we have to get out of here because we're cooking. And mm-hmm. they have to leave so quickly that Bobby has to make like an ice slide for them yep. to like get out of the water before it boils them alive. And then the volcano starts erupting. <laughs> Oh, they called it a bobsled, and I got angry oh. because his name is Bobby. Oh, I didn't even put that together. That's how much I hate puns that I hear you them, say- and <laughs> instinctually I know I should be mad. <laughs> like something feels wrong here. Mm-hmm. What is it? Yep. Yeah, this is setting off my spidey sense, <laughs> and I hate it. Yeah, so this volcano eruption and this earthquake, my note here, they didn't show it, but my note here says, this killed people. Uh, mm-hmm. Because it started. Oh yeah, I a hundred percent put that. It started a landslide. Buildings are collapsing. Um, we do see Scott and Gene start saving kids and as many people as they can, and then, like all the other team members kind of start filtering in and start saving people. Building collapses ways. on a woman, and I put woman dies. Uh, <laughs> even though we see Kitty does pull her out somewhat unharmed from the rubble, um, and then uh, Kurt catches somebody like a couple who's falling off the side of a building. <laughs> <laughs> so the other people in the building okay those two gonna die kurt saves them just in time yeah yep and uh then everybody cheers for them so this is a nice switch up for them uh they went from yeah because like at, the outcast. at first scott is like oh should we be worried and then they instantly get celebrated yeah um and they're all surprised um and, uh, happily surprised back on the ship um, Storm multiple is still on the ship with Storm. Is so Nobody funny. took multiple with him. Because he's a 12 year old. sucks. And Storm like apparently sent him out to go like look for the kids and she's like did you look everywhere and then like 12 of him comes back out and he's like yeah everywhere. I actually counted it was 14 of them. 14? Oh, yeah. oh, so I wasn't too far off. No no I, I was just like that's a lot. How many of him did they draw and it was like 14 and it's like is he coordinated enough that like they didn't just see like three of him in the same room and all the people are like, ah, crap, right. the creepy kids back. <laughs> um, right before that, though, we did get uh, a moment where it was like all the different like ways of like celebrating them, where it was like some of them are on jet skis. Uh, all of the like cute girls are like checking out Bobby, who makes an ice skating rink. Jean, for some reason, catches a swordfish with her telekinetic powers. <laughs> Kitty is signing autographs. Kurt, instead of teleporting, is literally just doing, like, I'm swapping with my image inducer, which is not a power. Yeah. Yeah. He's just showing off. Everybody's just showing off whatever they can at that point. Right. Um, and then uh, at the, cel- at the, at the celebratory picnic. dinner, um, mm-hmm. the volcano starts acting up again, just as all the kids are celebrating. Uh, then Magma admits... She thinks she's the reason that the volcano has awoken because she kind of like activated it when she she says she touched it. I didn't see her touch it, but I guess that's what happened when she went in the water. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they don't even get a chance really to like tell her it's okay uh, because they see storm like they well they see a cloud above the uh, the ship and they're like uh oh. 
I love that Storm is so mad on the boat, she creates a fucking storm cloud <laughs> that is going to make not just her life and the kid's life miserable. All the people on the boat are going to start getting seasick because one of the many horrible things I've heard about cruises is when there's a storm, you're going to get sick. I didn't know that. It's like a motion sickness thing or like, yeah. like okay. Yeah, like there's not enough Dramamine in the world for some people. Because you don't have um, like a fixed point anywhere to like... I think even if you do, if you're just shaky as shit, you're fucked. Oh, oh, oh you mean just actual like movement of the storm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then right around the same time, I think, I don't think it was supposed to be related. I think it was supposed to be for story timing. The volcano starts erupting again. Mm-hmm. Um, the ground splits open and uh, lava starts pouring out. Magma can kind of control it. My note, right as that all happens, is fucking everyone dies. Ah, uh, yeah. There's multiple times that, like, the, the, there was several casualties. Um, yeah. There are people getting into buildings that the roof is on fire, which can't be safe. Right. <laughs> which that's, I know, survival of the fittest at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she, uh, so Magma starts, like, going towards the volcano. She just feels drawn towards it, almost zombie like. Yeah, walks through a wall of smoke and Boom Boom is like, uh, you shouldn't go up. I can't do shit. Yeah. Uh, Storm arrives just in time to start making it rain to try to cool off the lava. Um, it's only doing so much, though, because uh, it's a fucking Yeah, volcano. Bobby tries to make, like, an ice wall to stop lava. Yeah. <laughs> He's learning. Mm-hmm. Um, then Magma goes to the top of the volcano. Um, she's starting to be able to, like, lava bend this which is Mm. interesting um yeah and before we get into what happens there like one thing that stood out to me that's not how lava works like the way that the lava moves it very much is flowing like water here Mm -hmm. that's not like how like lava is more solid yeah right it's just it's just like uh it's literally molten rock yeah it's rock that is barely become liquid right is the idea it's like it's just so um malleable yeah um, but yeah so you get up to the top she's like looking like she's gonna toss the the ring into mordor and yeah. mount doom and storm distracts her and then there's like she like dives in as the cliff starts breaking and then she is swimming through lava as if it's a swimming pool and this goes to my that's not how lava works yeah <laughs> Uh, so this is where this is why it kind of reminded me of Joe versus the volcano because like oh she just jumped in because this is kind of mm-hmm. how Joe does it in the in the movie he's like oh let's just spoiler. go spoiler that kind of I mean you knew from the beginning it was going to happen now what happens other places in the movie um, are like more of a surprise but mm-hmm. also the movies from like the eighties uh, or is it the eighties or ninety I can't remember no it was the nineties anyway Man. but it literally she dives in she goes deeper it stops the eruption the lava like reverses the flow storm is in shock because she just watched one of her students die in her mind (laughs) and she's like ah she fell in there's like a brief like half second of panic and then magma just like pops out of the center like she's fine yeah more than fine too like she's Mm -hmm. like recharged and then some she did like the power up thing from a couple season finales ago oh so is that supposed to be the season finale no magma's power up no (laughs) Of all the things to be a season finale moment, <laughs> the girl who's only spoken in three episodes, not getting a moment here. <laughs> um, but that's kind of supposed to be like the that's the, probably the most important thing that happens in this episode is that Magma not only doesn't get too sick, she becomes like an elevated version of herself. Yeah. Um, but then back down uh, at the village. They have like a sitcom ending. Yeah. Everybody's celebrating and kind of happy and okay with what just went on. And note address the city being leveled, the uh the town being leveled, and the people that were probably under the rubble and definitely and dead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um and it's just kind of like, yep. Oh, I guess we have to go back onto the awkward ship with all those people who hate mutants. That's true. That's probably why they ended it there, because if you had yeah. to think about what happened uh, next, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's kind of depressing, isn't it? It's not a strong ending. <laughs> no, especially for a season freaking finale. Uh, so I I only hate this episode in its context. Otherwise, it's whatever. 
it's it's like one of the kid adventures, but like it came after like probably one of my more favorite like mm-hmm. story beats, and I watched this before that. Yeah, and, and like, and oh, you're and, still mad about it, and it's still like it still didn't fit there either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the same problem I have with this one is the problem I had with what was the other the Scott and Havoc episode where they're lost at sea. Oh, that's Adri- right, adrift. Yeah. Yeah, where it's nature's the enemy. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. That that does not jive for me. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lucy, you're just on schedule. We're back. Oh yeah. She knows that we're done with this recording session tonight. So she must be able, I must be like put off a scent when we're wrapping mm-hmm. up because she can't I have headphones on. She can't hear any of this stuff. Or maybe she can. She can I don't know. Um no, but she's licking the knobs of my keyboard. Now you can actually see it instead of me just talking. Yeah, again, uh, now they know you're not crazy. Right. Huh. Hey, Lucy. Well, hi on the plus side, we get a happy season finale with Lucy being an active participant on the episode. Yeah. So, no. Rod, take us home, end this, uh, this season, and we'll be back next week, hopefully, with a guest interview. I closed that part of the script. Let me... <laughs> Open it back up. <laughs> uh, hang on. <laughs> this will be one Don't you cuts. edit any of this out. Leave all this <laughs> in so they, they know what chaos our lives are. I totally forgot that it was swapped out. And then I was like, oh, I don't, I don't need the rest of this. Lucy, she's chewing on these knobs now. <laughs> Do you want me to read it so your cat doesn't eat your piano? I got it here. Okay. Uh, all right. Um... Thanks for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or official Instagram post about this episode. If you like what you heard, we'd appreciate the ra- a rating on the podcast app you're choosing. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, and we're still on our campaign to be number one on CastBox. So number one on CastBox. Listen to us everywhere else, but then throw still add us on CastBox. Add us on the CastBox and like let it run while you're sleeping or something. I don't know. <laughs> this would be the worst thing to fall asleep to. No, turn the volume all the way down, but just like let. Oh, okay. like, <laughs> as I said, I don't, I don't see anybody wanting to fall asleep listening to our podcast. <laughs>